There are so many types of breathing with complex sounding names. The poster girl of yoga has her nose closed. Some teachers make funny noises. It's confusing and complicated. And yes, I admit, building a pranayama practice can be challenging and actually very challenging for a beginner. Let's try and decode this science a little and see if there is any method to this madness. Over the next 10 minutes or so, you will get acquainted with about 10 types of pranayams, uh, yogic breathings. More importantly, it will be my endeavor to present the core principles behind it and a way to understand this complex subject which just goes way beyond breathing. Let's deep dive into pranayama. For starters, try this. Inhale slowly and exhale slowly. When you inhale, the belly rises. When you exhale, the belly falls. Just, just do this slowly. In almost all pranayams, we breathe through the nose and almost never through the mouth. Just a few exceptions sometimes. Simple inhale and exhale. Easy? Now let's try and become Sanskrit gurus here. Replace the word inhale when your belly rises, inhale with puraka and exhale with rechaka. Now, this is a pranayam which is puraka and rechaka. It already sounds like a fancy yogic kind of breathing. Now let's add some more bits to it. Now inhale slowly and this time clasp your nostrils and hold the breath inside and then exhale for double the duration. So the ratio of inhale to exhale is 1 is to 2. Let's try this. I'm not uh, explaining this hand mudra in this in this module. We'll leave that story for another day. Don't bother about this. Now this is called kumbhaka. In the inhale, the kumbhaka is the hold, and then the exhale. So if you were to make it fancier, this would be puraka, kumbhaka, and rechika. Try again. This wasn't that hard. Now let's do just the reverse. Let's do rechika, kumbhaka, puraka. Now how's that one? Exhale completely, empty your stomach and your lungs out completely, right? And then do the breath hold and then do the inhale. So it's something like this, exhale first. Now, uh, be wary of the be very wary of the tendency of doing something like this. And coming out like that. You know, sometimes when we do it in the swimming pool, we emerge like we've been out of breath for so long. Uh, hold the kumbhaka for as long as it is comfortable. Now, this kumbhaka is called Nishesha kumbhaka. Nishesha means empty. You would have noticed that this kind of uh, retention of breath, of hold is shorter. That is, it is harder to hold when there is when the breath is completely out than what we, we did when it was Antara Kumbhaka. Now be mindful that if you're training your lungs for the first time, go easy. Go very easy on your lungs. It takes a lot of time to build this capacity. It's, it's like running, you know. The first day you start running, you run a little, then you run a little, then you run a little bit more. It takes a while to run a marathon. So just, just, just go easy on your side. Right. Now, in addition to these two kumbhakas, we have something called the spontaneous kumbhaka. So now when I'm talking to you, I put a stop sign right in front of me. It is something like... Just something like this. So whatever air was inside remains inside my lungs, whatever is there outside. It is, it is a spontaneous stoppage. So 
you know you could be breathing this could be part of your of your morning breathing exercises this could be done when you are uh, you know sitting in a in, in any comfortable position like like i'm sitting at my desk right now now this kumbhaka is called kevala kumbhaka that is spontaneous spontaneous stoppage of breath so a good now they say they say that if a yogi can retain kovil kevala kumbhaka for as long as he wants mind you as long as he wants not as long as he can as long as he wants as per his will he is he has mastered nirvana because he has mastered the art of breathing now we aren't really teaching transcendence in this 10 minute module it's not even possible to teach it over over a longer module but it takes many years of practice to reach there i am just acquainting you of the possibilities that breathing may have incidentally kumbhakas work like a charm for many diseases and this topic has been pretty much researched something like what we did nisheshaka kumbhaka is a kind of a self induced hypoxia which is a much wider term and we'll do much wider research on this topic in in a bit now let's spice this up a little bit and add a twist to this tale this time we will do breathing from one nostril and exhale from the other so the way to do this is for starters close one nostril i leave the explanation of this hand mudra again for another day for now use your right thumb to close the right nostril exhale completely from the left okay then inhale from the left and exhale from the right then inhale from the right and exhale from the left it works something like this now this constitutes one cycle now you may notice that sometimes the intake of the breath from one nostril is different from the intake of the breath from the other nostril that's perfectly okay all of us have different capacities of breathing from the right and the left now we can pace this up a little how noticing how the belly comes in and out as you pace it up of course and as you pace it up this runs like a train on a track when you come back slow the train down you don't need to do this immediately but this is where uh, we can get with alternate nostril breathing now people who have heart issues or high blood pressure don't make the train pace up that fast and for more do's and don'ts and for a more detailed module on on this kind of pranayam have a look at the course section or do check out the resource library now this kind of left right left right left right kind of breathing is loosely lumped together as alternative nostril breathing now alternate now alternate nostril breathing or anb is is an english word <clears throat> and it covers many of the sanskrit uh, many of the pranayams in sanskrit we don't have something called alternate nostril breathing or equivalent as a sanskrit term but a and b has now come to be like a umbrella for many uh, including many different types of pranayams a and b the way to make the nostrils right and left go is the foundation of many different pranayams a yogi moves from the base levels right and left to much subtle forms to much finer nuances and can change the ratios of the inhale and the exhale so this time let's let's try another thing let's not hold this uh, uh, pranayam for for too long but let's focus on the ratios you know now inhale from one side exhale from the other and when you hold make the ratio double so if you inhale so let's explain let me explain this if you inhale to the count of 4 hold to the count of 4 but exhale to the count of 
So let's play around a little with the retention times. Let's inhale. Now sometimes you may find that you are not able to exhale to the count of 8. Breath gets finished in 6 counts or 7 counts. Now that is, it takes practice. To make an exhale long happens just over practice. Now such variations of this alternate nostril breathing are Anulom Vilom and also another pranayam called Nadi Shodhana where we hold for double the amount. Now let's do another variation of what may be termed as an alternate nostril but it is we are not holding this one. The, the first variation is what is called Surya Bhedi or Surya Bheda. Surya is the word for sun, Bhedi means penetrating. So we in this case we breathe from the right and exhale from the left. It's like this. There is no inhale from the left side. This pranayam will generate heat in the body. It gets its name from the sun or the surya which, which dominates the channel on the right side. Now as for yoga in Ayurveda, there is a main channel and there are two sub channels, the right and the left, dominated by the sun and the moon. And these kind of pranayams help balance the right and the left. But again, the longer story about channels for another day. Now let's try the reverse. Breathe from the left and exhale from the right. There is no breathing from the right knee. So breathe from the left. So breathe from the left, exhale from the right. This is supposed to be a cooling pranayam and very good for dealing with cool uh, for and it's very good for dealing with hot weather. It is called Chandra Bhedi or the moon dominating prana. Now, now this kind of A and B where alternate nostrils are used, alternate nostril breathing is the building block for many pranayams. A and B has the ability to calm down the nervous system or activate it depending on which combination of breathing you're doing, how long are you holding. Just for, for now, let's completely jump the breath holes and play with the sound instead. We will add a layer of visualization also for, for this pranayam, so it gets a little more meditative. For this pranayam that I'm going to teach you now, we will breathe with both the nostrils. You may want to keep your right hand on the stomach and the left on the chest to see where is the, where is the breath going. Or if you're comfortable not doing it, you can put your hands in, in the mudra. If, you, if you're sitting in a, in a, uh, in a, a cross leg, you can put your hands in this mudra right there. Or if you're sitting on a, on a desk like I'm doing right now, I would just hold my hands like this. Now in this case, breathe in and out normally. The only change is imagine that you're breathing through your throat. Now obviously you can't breathe through your throat, there is no hole in the throat. But just picture that there is a hole like this in your throat and the breath comes in and out of there. You may want to pull in your belly button a little bit so that the breath stays in the lungs. So it's something like this. Now, the same kind of sound can also be produced if you have a glass and you're trying to frost it, you know, using your mouth like That's the kind of sound we generate, but with the mouth closed. Okay. Make it slow, keep it even paced, you can close your eyes. As your visualization gets deeper with your eyes closed, the breathing will become heavier. It will be something like a soft snore or a hissing 
the sound comes from the back of your throat okay now for those of you who are star wars fans this is very similar to the darth vader breath now don't visualize the darth vader um, um the darth vader image but but recall the breath that happens the evenness of the breath the rise and fall of uh, of the breath is something like a soft snore you know the even pace and this is a very meditative breath it has the ability to take you to a much deeper level of the mind in actually actually instantly so i did keep up my promise of acquainting you with 10 pranayams in 10 minutes maybe or maybe we went a little overboard 10 minutes but just keep in mind that this is not a 10 minute capsule playing with inhale exhale holding it maxing out retention time now this is not a game we are working with we are working with our lungs we are playing with our breath we are holding breath with our uh, you know with our nostrils we are making the belly rise and fall the chest rise and fall there's a whole science behind it it's not this easy do uh, and setting up a proper daily practice that it takes a good understanding of all these elements in action and not just these elements of breath in your own body but the weather conditions that are available some pranayams are not supposed to be done in extreme heat or extreme cold because they counter heat and cold it depends on your prakriti which is your body constitution it depends on the dosha or the derangement of the body constitution that may have happened so that's your own body constitution this is these 10 are just were just a sampler the girhan samhita which is an ancient text on yoga uh, and pranayams describes some 120 types of pranayams of course no one practices all of them nobody can practice all 120 together there is no time for one and secondly these are meant for very specific purposes we neither do we just get up one fine day and say oh today i am in a alternate nostril state kind of mind it doesn't happen like that there is a definite method to this madness this is very precise and very definite how this pranayam works pranayams are like laser guided tools that you can use for the stuff that you're working on think of pranayam as yogic medicine okay to be used depending on what you want to cure like like we were talking about do you want to tone the parasympathetic nervous system do you want to increase the lung capacity you want to run better you want to swim better you want to improve your digestion you want to clear off the sinuses you want to cure a thyroid you know depending or, or you just want to deal with some stress you want to uh, have better moods you know you are working with depression kind of situations you are working with post traumatic stress depending on what condition you are working with this is this practice changes and eventually and eventually over time it works a bit more on the mind it can use it can be used to deepen your meditation cultivate single pointedness focus build awareness so there is a lot that you can do with these tools do visit the reading room for some awe inspiring material and research and papers that have been done on pranayam if you're looking to dig deeper and expand your knowledge check out the online course on pranayam and if you still don't find what you're looking for write in to us to have a chat with our experts if you want a personal guidance on how to structure your practice